Northwest Airlines Flight 188, San Diego to Minneapolis last night, 147 passengers on board, and everything seemed fine. The plane got to Minneapolis and then kept right on going. For more than an hour, controllers couldn't raise the pilots by radio. Fighter jets were put on alert. The plane flew on to Wisconsin, then looped around and returned to Minneapolis. Were the pilots asleep? Were they, as they claim, in an argument? Either way, it's not terribly reassuring. We begin tonight with Lisa Stark. Northwest Flight 188 overshot the Minneapolis airport by 150 miles before air traffic controllers were able to raise the pilots. The Airbus A320 was over Wisconsin when flight controllers finally turned the pilots back toward their destination. They weren't just distracted for a little bit. They were distracted for a good long while. And that, that seems to be quite extraordinary. Sources tell ABC News the last radio contact with the plane was at 6.46 p.m. Central Time. Ten minutes later, at 6.56, Denver controllers tried to hand off the pilot to controllers in Minneapolis. There was no response from the cockpit. The plane, with 147 passengers on board, never began its descent to Minneapolis and just kept flying at 37,000 feet right over the airport. It wasn't until 8.14 p.m., more than an hour later, that controllers and pilots reconnected. The flight landed more than an hour late. Passengers had no idea anything was wrong until they pulled up to the gate. Suddenly there were cops, all uh, airport police all over the airplane, and they told us to sit back down. So we all sat back down, wondered what was going on. They went into the cockpit, didn't say anything else, and then said, okay, everybody off the plane. The National Transportation Safety Board said pilots have told authorities they were in a heated discussion over airline policy and they lost situational awareness. But the NTSB told ABC News they are also investigating whether the pilots may have fallen asleep in the cockpit. Now, we should stress we do not know if those pilots fell asleep and we don't know if fatigue played a role here. But it has before, and pilot fatigue has been such a long-time concern, so much so that the FAA and the airlines are now working to rewrite the pilot work rules. As for the pilots on this Northwest flight, well, Delta Airlines, which now owns Northwest, says those pilots are grounded until the investigation is complete. All Charlie. Right, Lisa Stark reporting from Washington tonight. Thanks. And we asked our aviation consultant, John Nance, about this story. John, doesn't it strain credulity that two pilots could be out of radio contact for more than an hour and overshoot their destination city by 150 miles? Well, it does to a certain extent, Charlie, but uh, this sort of thing has happened a few times in the past before where you've had a very sleepy crew and they've both tried to uh, stay awake, they've both gone to sleep and, and stayed asleep for too long. Now, in this particular case, we're told the explanation is something different, but uh, this bears all the earmarks of a crew that's gone to sleep. You would suspect that they had dozed off. Well, I I would say actually there's less than a 1% chance that there's any other rational explanation. This is not a crew that is engaged in doing something else. This is a crew that really is not conscious at that point in time. And, uh, and the other part of the airmark is the fact that we as pilots are constantly maintaining an, uh, a listening watch for air traffic control. You can't just wait for a light to come on to tell you that they're calling you. You have to listen all the time, every minute. And uh, to be out of contact for more than 10 minutes for any pilot, it starts nagging at you. John, if they were asleep, would the passengers been in danger? There is no way for me to sugarcoat this. If the uh, sleepiness had overtaken them and it continued until they ran the airplane out of fuel, yes, the passengers are most definitely in danger. Shock you as a former pilot? Yeah, it does shock me, Charlie. And I tell you, the thing that shocks me the most, we have had the Federal Aviation Administration for 35 or 40 years refuse to acknowledge that pilots are humans and we get sleepy. They refuse to acknowledge it. They refuse to allow planned sleeping in the cockpit. John Nance, our aviation consultant, the conversation we had a few moments ago.